And there's a, a course that's allowing low scores. Mm -hmm. And these players know they have to go out there and shoot well into the 60s to contend for a championship and then go ahead and win it. You have to do double that to even put yourself in a position to win. And Kepka knew that coming in. Well, he was hitting the ball so well, it looked like he was so relaxed. It never looked like he got excited out there. His rhythm stayed the same all week long. It looked like he was just out playing with the guys. And that's what you have to do to be able to control your emotions playing in a major championship. In a U.S. Open championship, which you know well because you won two of them, there are going to be ups and downs within the tournament. You're going to miss a couple of putts. He hadn't bogeyed a hole in the back yeah. nine all week. And then he comes out and bogeys 10. But then he steadies himself. How big well, was that turn? He three-putted 10 for, that, for his only bogey in the second nine. And then it was those two great par saves at 12 and 13 that really got him going that set up the three birdies in a row at 14, 15, 16. I thought you said something interesting in, in relation to Brooks Kepka. This is a, a kid with a lot of talent, had to go play in Europe to start his career. Uh, he, he's got this attitude of I've been overlooked throughout my entire career. You said that it helps having friends like Dustin Johnson, mm -hmm. some of his other buddies that have contended one of major championships, because you know you can hang with them. Well, he plays a lot of practice rounds with that group of guys that live down in Jupiter, Florida. And when your friends start winning, you go back to the room at night and say, well, I, I'm as good as they are. I've beat them my whole life. Why can't I beat them now? And that's got to help you think that more positively toward the fact that you can win this.